Well, a very good evening to um, whoever is showing up at this time to uh, join me for a live stream. Uh, it's been some time since I last had a live stream. In fact, it was, I think, about a year ago. Um, hadn't done one in a while. I've since moved house and also since grown the channel a little bit. Um, so I thought it would be quite fun to do a bit of a um, an edit along, a bit of a live session um, tonight as a bit of a reintroduction to maybe who I am for some of the people who have joined my channel more recently um, and a bit of a celebration of the fact that um, I've just surpassed 10,000 subscribers which is honestly such a huge 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 milestone I'm incredibly honored incredibly thankful to everyone who's subscribed who's got involved who's liked and commented on the videos when I started this little side project some time ago um I never thought that I would get to 10,000. I, I doubted I would even get to 1,000. So for the fact that I've got to 10 is astonishing for me. Um, and that's why I thought, let's have a nice gin and tonic, put on a sweater, settle down into a comfy chair, get some uh, get some editing on the go. Um, let me know how I sound. Let me know how I look. I mean, don't get personal. Like, can you see me? Can you hear me? Um, you know, say what you want about my hair. To be fair... Some of my videos recently, I've had very long hair. That was the lockdown locks, and they've gone now. So, um, mm. what have got some people in the comments? Dave Cullen says, good evening, Andrew. Good evening to you, Dave. Um, Dave is a uh, Edinburgh, um, or at least Scotland, Edinburgh region photographer. Um, and we have Pavlo says, hello from Canada. We're having a great mushroom photography season this year. Looking forward to an interesting stream today. And Tim waves. Hi there, Tim. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I'm hoping this can be quite interactive. So do please get into the comments. Um, we can make this a bit of a Q&A, ask some questions maybe about my work, what I, what, I, what I do, blah, blah, blah. Alison's in there says, hello from Derbyshire. Hello to Derbyshire from Edinburgh. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen my streams before, I like to keep them pretty relaxed, pretty chill. Um, yeah, just enjoy, enjoy the enjoy the vibes. Um, I will show you what we've got going on though. I've got this big collection of various macro photos, some of which you might have seen. I think this one might have been in a in a video, and some of which you might not have done. This one definitely has been in. Uh, I think one of the holding stills you might have seen that. Um, so I've got a whole bunch. We're not going to get through all of these. There's 32. I'm not going to be streaming for that long to do 32 photos. Some of these were little uh, examples, but um, uh, I hope that I can show some little techniques um, and whatnot. So you know what? Why don't we just dive um, straight in? And I'm going to pick one pretty much at, at random. Um, what I will say at the top of this video... Um, Whenever I do these edits on all of my edit videos, and including on live, live streams and stuff, what I really want people to take away um, from them is that this is not the way to edit photos. What I'm showing in all of these videos is just the way that I do it, what I look for, what I try to achieve from my photos. Photography, like any artistic medium like that, is entirely subjective. It's entirely open to interpretation. It's why I think it's so great, because you can... Two people can take the same photo and they'll look completely different. A hundred people can take the same photo and they'll look completely different. So what I like to do is just, here's what I would look for. Here's what I would do. This is not a guide on what exactly you should do, but maybe you can take away some inspiration. Maybe you might learn about a new tool that you haven't tried. Only one tool here, I hear you say. Wasn't a very good joke, but you know, I'm only one mouthful into a G&T, so give me a little while and I might make some better ones. Hmm. Have some more people in the chat. Uh, Katie says, good evening. Um, and uh, Ionescu, I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing that um, name uh, correctly, says, I'm new to macro photography. So new that I did not buy a macro lens yet. I'm in search of one and uh, I enjoy your videos. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, you can pick them up um, fairly cheaply. You could also try using macro extension tubes, which can be a very affordable way of getting into it. Anyway, I'm gonna start on this photo. This is one that I took on a, just a walk around some forest area. It stood out to me because it's just a nice brown, old autumn leaf against some vibrant green grass. But we've also got the benefit of it having just rained. So we've got all these lovely 
um, water droplets um, on there that's giving it a really nice um, bit of texture and lovely like highlights uh, catching in this. Um, we can see this was F8. That helps get a nice bit of sharpness. I'll have manually focused on the um, leaf itself and at 160th of a second, just if you're interested in those settings. Let's go over into the develop module. Um, this is a CR2 file. I always shoot in RAW. I encourage you to do the same. Just put that out there straight away. Um, I'm not going to touch the white balance. It looks pretty good. And I'm actually not really going to touch any of the exposure sliders. I think we're going to dive straight in to where I always say I do most of my work in the HSL tab. Excuse me, the hue, saturation, and luminance. This is where you can change the hues the saturation and luminance, as the name suggests, of individual colors. And that is where you can really get a nice look going on. It's also where if your color is a little bit too overpowering in a scene, you can just tone that channel down by itself without affecting everything, without just grabbing saturation for the whole image and bringing that down. So it can be a really nice way of working. So in this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our hue channel. And looking at these greens, these grasses, they are a little bit on the slightly, I think, yellowy um, side. And so I'm just going to move that slider up a tiny amount. Look at just that small amount going from zero to plus nine. If I just flick that off and on, those greens have already become much more emerald, much more vibrant. It's a tiny, tiny little touch. It does make a big difference. Let's do the same with the yellow channel, actually, and bring that slightly down from the, from the greeny yellows more into the orangey yellows. With these, a subtle approach works well. If you go too far, as you'll see, we suddenly get this sort of pinky orange leaf, and the same is absolutely true for the orange channel. Things can get weird quickly. So let's just be subtle. Go to something like this. With our luminance, we can go uh, up and down. You know what? We can go up. Because this leaf is mostly yellow, we can boost its saturation, oh, sorry, its luminance, and make it stand out from its background a little bit more just by lightening up that yellow. Um, seeing the comments that from Katie, we have a super chat. That's very, very generous. Thank you very much, uh, Katie. That is, um, oh, congrats on the 10,000. Um, that is incredibly generous. Um, that is, uh, not a requirement of being on the stream, but thank you ever so much. Um, that is really, really nice. Um, um, I, I will carry on with the oranges. We can bring those down. What I often say in my videos and what you see I'm doing now is that every time I grab a slider, you don't know always exactly what it is going to do. You don't necessarily know if it's going to have moving a slider one way or the other is going to have the exact effect that you want. So sometimes it's an experiment. So grab it drag it one way, drag it the other, and then you can kind of figure out exactly what it is that you want to achieve. And in this instance, I think I do want to increase its lightness a little bit, because again, I just think that helps make that leaf stand out from some of those grasses around it. So I think it looks, uh, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to leave it there with those, um, with those tools, and I'm going to do a crop, I think just bringing it in a little bit at the top and bottom with a four by five crop. Um, I think a 4x5 is probably my most common one, because particularly for vertical images, maybe not so much for um, horizontal ones, because I just find that the natural aspect ratio of, um, uh, of a full-frame camera in vertical, I always just feel looks a little bit tall and narrow, so I just like to kind of bring it in a little bit at the top and bottom like this. Um, so that's uh, about right. And then I think what I want to do is grab a brush. Now, um, Lightroom has got all these new uh, sort of ways to use masks um, in there, which I've spent a little bit of time with so far, but it's the same tools that they had before. They've just kind of slightly put them into different ways of, of working. So hopefully if you haven't got the new update, you are at least maybe familiar that these tools exist. Um, using selective tools like the brush tool, like radial filters, linear filters, um, that is, for me, when I figured out how to use those, was the biggest step forwards in my editing because it, you suddenly go from making an edit to, say, the exposure, which affects the whole image in one go. And instead, you can start to just adjust only the areas that you want, just adding in a little hint of light here, darkening it down, dodging and burning, as that might be called. Um, it just finds it's a much... Um, more precise way of working and that kind of gives it a little bit more of a 
um, of a polished edge, um, I would feel. So in this, what I want to do is I'm just, I think that I want to just slightly bring down the highlights, but also want to increase the clarity. Now, usually clarity, I wouldn't go near for sort of natural scenes. It looks a little bit crunchy, but I think adding in a little bit on some of these water droplets is just going to help bring out the um, the little sort of specular highlights for those little light reflections on those droplets. So I'm just sort of roughly painting this in. If we look, um, if we click to show the overlay, you can see just what I'm doing. It's rough, you know, I'm not doing, uh, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not drawing around the edge to make sure that it's just on the leaf because it's quite a soft brush anyway, so it's not going to be that noticeable if we go over. So let's uh, uh, stop showing this overlay. And now if we just sort of pump that clarity up and down, you can see what it's doing. You can see that quickly if you go too far, it gets sort of very dark and shadowy and a bit crunchy here. So it's another one that a subtle approach is good here. But I just think having that little crispness um, actually looks, looks pretty good. Um, let's boost those whites a touch as well. And you know what? I think that might be all I want to do. Let's look at the before. I think straight out of camera, it's a it's a decent looking shot, but just those few edits just to kind of bring more of a rich orangey tone to that leaf, I think is um I think it's okay. You know, some quick edits for a for a quick snap. This is not the most dramatic of macro shots. Let's have a look through and have a look at some other ones. Um as I say, we'll have seen these ones before. I'll have a little go on this one. Uh, Luke says, hi there from South Africa. South Africa, I've got people all over the world. That's really exciting. Hello. Hello, Luke. Thank you um, so much for joining this stream. Um, as I say, if anyone has um, questions uh, for what I'm doing, um, let me know. Put them in the comments. And in fact, Alistair has a uh, comment saying, do you ever uh, use the calibration sliders to pre-adjust the color? So that would be the camera calibration down at the bottom here. Um, no, I typically don't to pre-adjust. You know, my, my adjustments would be beginning with uh, white balance, and usually I do that manually so that I can fine tune it. Then I will go into my HSL. Sometimes I will use the camera calibration from more of a creative level. I will sort of add, I will do some color toning, but I tend to do that less these days because I've done most of that in HSL. So I, I actually tend not to go near that all that much which you know some people may tell me that's a terrible idea it works for me though um okay let's go back into library and let's pick a another one um in fact let's do let's do this one because i thought this one might be a good example um because this is a shot that i think is fine but it's one that i would probably ignore if i was going through um, and if I, usually when I take uh, macro uh, photos, I end up taking at least 20 or 30 of every single thing I do. Maybe that's just to like get the focus right. Maybe I'm focus stacking. Maybe I'm experimenting with the, uh, with the light and trying it in different angles. And so this is probably one that I'd go, yeah, it's not that great because we've got quite a lot of highlights coming in here and here. And there's obviously natural light coming in on the top of the mushroom, but then in this part here, it's very much fallen to shadow. And as a result, I just don't really think it stands out. So I thought what I'll do is give it a go and see whether I can make it a, a slightly better looking, more interesting photo, coming even coming from a raw file, which I think is otherwise a bit flat and forgettable. So let's see what we can do. If I can't, then um, there's not a lot I can do about it because this is going out live. So I can't just edit it out. Good gin. Uh, and yeah, do please let me know. Let me know where you're watching from, how long you've been watching for, and you know any any questions you want. I say this is a bit of a celebration of hitting an amazing 10k milestone. I'm I'm so 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 pleased. It's dark image. We're going to start off by bringing up that exposure quite a lot. Plus one straight away brightened it up it's already helped I don't mind that some of these uh, highlights are getting a little blown out I do like that we're seeing more of the detail in the background when we've got that really lovely bokeh going on shadows we can lift 
you know what? I'm actually not going to touch the shadows because I think I'm going to come back to those because I don't like lifting the shadows starts to lift all the shadows on this this on this greenery down here and I think we lose a little bit of that contrast in the background so I think this is going to be an example where I use those selective adjustments a little bit more um, temperature the, uh, for the white balance I definitely think we could cool it down and with a tint it's definitely all looking a little bit green so let's just bring that up somewhere around here and already we've brought back some nicer more natural looking tones uh, in the mushroom, if we look at our before and our after, it's gone from being a dark, contrastless shot to being something that's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more interesting that you would um, uh, that you would actually maybe pay attention to if you were scrolling through your Instagram feed. Maybe it's one that might stand out. Um, so that'd be good. Um, okay. Uh, just having a look in the chat. Dave Collins says, do you use any of the Nick effects add-ons from the Nick collection? Um, I don't. I do have them. I bought them uh, when they were first came out, and I think just before they were bought by Google, actually. Um, they can be really, really good. Um, I tend not to. I do have a variety of presets, which sometimes I talk about, and I might use some in this one. Um, my favorite are the Visco um, presets, which I, I think have some really, really nice looks to them. Um, unfortunately i had a look for these the other day and i don't think that they actually sell them as presets anymore i think visco is focused solely on its mobile app which is a shame uh but no the nick collection i think is great i think they have some really good stuff but no i i, I don't tend to i don't tend to use that anymore myself uh luke says congrats on reaching the 10k mark thank you so much thank you it is uh wonderful and very very unexpected um okay where was I? I remember where I was. We were doing things. I'm going back into the hue saturation luminance because I think that's, again, where we're going to do a lot of our work. These greens down here, they're very yellowy greens. This is a very, very vibrant sort of woodland meadow I was in. So I want to get to that hue. I want to take that green and just push it upwards a little bit. But as you'll notice, when I do, because of the nature of how like the color science works within Lightroom, they become very, very overly saturated. It's a very deep green. It's far too much. It looks a bit unnatural. So to balance that out, I'm going to go into the saturation, drag that green down a little bit. In fact, quite a lot, minus 40. Also with the luminance, drag it down and that will help balance out that saturation because usually a darker color is more saturated. As a color gets lighter and lighter, it loses that saturation. So we brought that down, and as a result, what we've got now is a still a rich, deep green, but it's more of an em a more natural emerald green that was out there in that lovely meadow, rather than it being that kind of sickly, yellowy green, which I think looks really, really nice. Um, so let's go back into our hue, and we can take that yellow again, because I'm seeing a lot of sort of sort of weak green, maybe not quite greeny yellow, but the yellow up here isn't looking that great. So let's just grab that, slightly move this down. Again, not too far because everything starts going a little bit too pink. I think somewhere around here, far enough, certainly. And what about that orange? What's that doing? Again, we pump that up and down. <laughs> Quickly, you can go very, very uh, weird with that orange if you want to. Um, somewhere around there I think looks good again it's about making it's not about for me completely changing a color and making it into something that was never there for me with this sort of editing it's about emphasizing what is there emphasizing those warmer uh, deep tones those like autumnal tones which kind of the camera has lost through like white balance and things like that so I think you know we've gone from without the HSL um, applied these weak greens and this this sort of sort of greeny lifeless yellow what we've done is brought back these lovely deep greens and these lovely autumnal um, oranges which i just think you know to my eye is what i want to get from these from this uh from this edit you may well find yourself that this isn't how you want to do it but as i said before editing of any kind is all down to personal preference i'm just showing you what i like to do okay um i think this is already looking pretty good in the hsl there's probably not much more that i i, I want to do but i'm going to start doing some work with the selective tools i'm going to start with a linear gradient 
that is going to allow me to pull up a mask here. Remember with your masks, anything that is pink is where the mask is being applied. And as you can see, this feathers out towards the end where it isn't. So that means that you can move it around and decide exactly where you want it to be. You can feather it off more and uh, you know put it exactly where it needs to be. And that's great. In this one, I don't want to see the overlay. Let's bring that exposure down. And as I do, as you can see, it's darkening this part of the frame. Now, the way I reason I do this is that because with photography, your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of an image. That's that's how it works. And therefore, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to make sure that the audience's attention is drawn to where it should go. In this case, I want that to be the mushroom. So I'm just trying to add a little bit of darkness to this bottom because it was a little bit bright. You saw with some of these greens a little bit overpowering. And I'm going to add a little bit more of stuff to, to, to these as well. Um, so I want that. I don't want that to be the first thing that you look at. You just see these vibrant greens in the bottom of the frame. Um, and so I'm, I'm just trying to help the eye go to the right place. Sometimes it's a little bit hit and miss and a bit vague. And also, if I'm not explaining things properly, just let me know. Ask away and I'll see if I can be a little clear at any point. Um, uh, Fred says, where do you find your Visco presets? Um, uh, he's from France. Hello, Fred. Um, if I didn't mention, uh, I, they were available directly from Visco as a, as a paid... Sorry, huge explosion outside. I think it's fireworks. Um, but yeah, that just... <laughs> That just shook my house. That was um, a bit much. Maybe you heard it. Um, maybe you even saw it. I didn't see a flash. I just heard the bang. Uh, where was I? Yes, yeah, sorry. Visco presets, they are... I don't think they are available to buy um, any more from them. But um, while I'm on the subject of presets, then what I will say, and I say this a lot whenever I use them, for me... Presets are great, and there's a lot of talk about, oh, yeah, you know, Beals buying other photographers' presets, and then, you know, everyone's photos look the same. That can be true if all you're doing when you get a preset is just one click apply, and then you consider your image done. If you want the Pete McKinnon look or, or whoever, and you just you buy their presets, you apply it to your image, and then because you want it to look like their photo. And that's not really what I want to do um, with, with my photography. And so I always use like presets as maybe it's inspiration. It's a starting point. So maybe I'd load this image up and I'd kind of look through these presets and I'd scroll down, see what effects, and I'd go, oh, I like these blue these blue tones in this image. And, or maybe I'd go down and I like the contrast with this. Or maybe even scroll down and go, oh, I love a black and white edit for this or something. But then I would apply it and then I would do my edits over the top. I would then go into my exposures. I'd then go and change the color balance to suit what I like. So therefore, I'm not just using, quote, someone else's preset. I'm, I feel like I'm then adding in my own edits. Um, you know, that's just kind of my, my, my feelings. You know, no preset can be applied successfully to every photo because every photo will have different tones, different exposures. You will want to achieve different looks from your image. So it's always worth playing around. I know that was a really long answer to where can you buy Visco presets, but I thought I'd talk about it while I'm at it. Where was I? Masking. Create new mask, this time a radial gradient. We're going to draw a circle and we're going to put that right over this mushroom, but we're going to go big because I want it to be feathered out. And you'll see what I mean as I start to, let's uncheck show overlay. And I start to up that exposure and look, it's just lightening up the underside of that mushroom even more. But because we've used such a big mask and we've spread it out, it doesn't look weird. You know, my feathering is also at 100. If we put it down to zero, you just got this circle. Um, it's very noticeable. So we feathered it to 100. You've got lovely more... Uh, uh, more vibrant space on the underside it's more visible it's lighter you can see what's going on we could add in a little bit of a um, little bit of white maybe even a touch of clarity just to give it that extra crispness on some of these um gills i used to say fins and then someone in the comments on my video said no 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 you're an idiot they're called uh, gills unless it was the other way around and i called them gills and they said it's fins i've already forgotten apologies it's one of those maybe it's blades I think it's gills. Someone will tell me this time. Um, while I'm at it, um, Hedgehog says, good evening. Uh, 
good evening especially to carlisle um i mean definitely good evening to carlisle carlisle's great um and shy violet says uh sorry i'm late congrats on 10k um thank you very much and you're not late everyone's right on time um uh, and then uh, Rickster says, hello from Portland, Oregon. Um, hello. Hello, Portland. I haven't been to Portland, but I hear it is wonderful. Um, cool. What was I doing next? You know what? Let's get a little bit more creative with this. I'm going to add in another radial filter. This one is going to give it a bit more of a of a look, a bit more of a fantasy feel, I think, because what I'm going to do, we've already got this light coming in from the top left it's been lit from above by the sun so i'm going to drag in this big old filter massive really really big thing and then move it almost entirely out of shot so you can see that it's just giving this very soft fall off into the image let's not show our overlay let's increase that exposure and let's increase that warmth and all of a sudden we can move it around it's like we've got this off-camera warm sunbeam that's just cascading into our scene in like this really really nice way maybe it's a little bit much let's turn that exposure down a little bit maybe increase the contrast a little bit make it look a bit more like actual sunbeam coming in i just think that looks um that gives it a really nice look that just we didn't have before let's look at our actual before dark the colors are all a bit off and a bit dreary and a bit drab you wouldn't really see anything to excite you all that much now we've brought in much more light it's a little bit overdone what i think i might do with this one is just tone this down kind of maybe back to there we're just slightly um increasing it but let's also just turn down those bring a little bit more contrast back into it because i think we're we've lost a little contrast on some of those and now let's look at our before and our after. I think this is looking really, really nice. I'm pleased with how this is, how this has come across. The last thing I want to try is adding a little bit of color grading. So that allows you to put different colors in the shadows, in the midtones, and in the highlights. It can be a really nice way of adding some tones. And I think with this, I want to add some like deep blue, sort of cool, like almost blue purpley tones. Um, into that I think something like that could look really nice and then in the highlights let's add some orange oh, I've gone too far this is looking a little silly off and on off and on let's go back to our shadows and just drag this and move it a bit more around into the blues or even towards the cyans this looks better okay this is better even then I still think we've got a little bit too far so I'm just going to bring that blending down also going to slightly bring down the luminance of our shadows with our highlights there we go we can just slightly do that as well and you know i think i'm going to call this one a day although i think i need to slightly straighten it up and maybe even slightly just bring down that thing so it's nicely done yeah what do you think of this let me know let me know what what your thought, thoughts are on on this image um you know because it came from it came from this which which to be honest is a shot that normally if i was looking through having just imported my images from my memory card i'd delete because it's just a little bit dull it's a bit lifeless but i think you know by spending enough time we've managed to bring something that's a little bit more exciting um so i'm hoping that that has been like a kind of a good little uh, quick tips in how to use some of these tools to to bring something back to life that you otherwise um might not feel that you can get anything from if i want to spend more time on this i'd take it over to photoshop i would get rid of um some of this detritus this long twig or bit of dead grass is is very distracting i do like all of this cobweb underneath it i also you know i don't even mind that it's slightly been eaten by um a slug or something but i would definitely do a little bit of cleanup just to make it a little neater um but again that's just a taste some people would love having all those little bits um on the mushroom itself gives it a bit more of a natural feel probably mm -hmm. uh, okay let's go back to our library and let's have a look at a different one in fact let's have a look at um at this one with uh, what i believe is a coral fungus um do feel free to correct me if i am wrong 
Um, okay. Because this one was a little bit of a challenge when I did a, uh, when I did an edit of this first because it's a very very high contrast scene in that most of this shot is um, is very very dark. It's a very low key image, but then the mushroom itself is so vibrant. I used flash to light this. The the actual fungus catches that light and it glows vivid orange, and so therefore kind of balancing it out in the edit sometimes is. Um, can be a little bit tricky. Uh, so let's give it a go. And I am going to just in start off by just increasing the exposure, increasing the shadows quite a bit, and also slightly bringing down those highlights. So that's just, I feel, bringing the image back to a, uh, a bit more of a, a generally decent exposure. Um, you know, there's more mid-tones visible. We can see more of what's going on. Um, so now I can do a little bit more of the actual um, edits. So let's just give this a go, toning it down slightly. Already looking a little better. And I'm just going to also slightly increase that tint. So now these greens on here are looking good. The wood color on the, uh, this around here is looking good. You can see just how clear the fungus is itself. Um, this was shot at uh, f8, manually focused on um, on the fungus. So yeah, I think this is um, this is pretty decent. Let's also do a bit of a crop. I don't think it's quite straight because this was growing straight up. So we can neaten neaten that up a little bit. Maybe bring it up slightly from this bottom corner, center it, not center it, but put it nicely along that uh, that right third of the frame. Something like this. Already looking a little bit better, I feel. Um, okay, let's. Uh, Let's dive into our HSL again. Those greens, I don't really want to do a lot. If I move those up, then as you can see, they quickly become very, very sort of emeraldy green. I just don't want them that much. So I'm just going to be subtle. Plus nine-ish is all I want is this little kiss of, of sort of greenness. And that's largely for some of these mosses rather than these leaves themselves and that's why i need to be careful um, because if you touch that too much then you'll end up changing all of the greens it starts to look a little bit weird even then i feel like i might have gone too far what if we just bring down those greens by the same amount ish minus 14 just i think that's nice i think that'll do okay let's go back to our hue so most of these uh, of the um, fungus itself will be in the yellow and orange channel so I do want to bring it down and make sure that it's a nice, real deep, rich tone again. But I'm not going to touch the orange because immediately we can just see how pink not only the fungus goes, but also the wood around it. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to keep that right in the middle, exactly as it was. And um, I'm just going to have leaned into the uh, the yellow slider for this one. Which I just I do think looks uh, a little bit better. Um, let's have a look at our before and our after. This one much more of a subtle approach than the last one because it didn't. I don't really think it needed a lot. What I don't want to do with this is is make everything bright and vibrant. I do like the the mood um, that's been that I've 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 achieved by keeping this background dark and just sort of selectively lighting. Uh, the fungus itself so what I don't want is like perfect visible exposure across the board otherwise we lose that drama we lose that depth you know you can see that this fungus is has depth that behind it goes far enough away that it falls to blackness so you really get a sense that what we're looking at something is close to the camera but it's within like a deep wood um, so so that works really really well have a quick uh, quick drink um again to anyone who is uh has joined more recently um thank you so much for joining first of all um i want to keep this interactive so any questions that you might have about what i'm doing or just about how i work generally or anything else um please do not hesitate to put your uh, questions in the uh in the comments um i want to do this live stream as a um a uh, bit of a celebration of the fact that I've recently just hit 10,000 um, subscribers, which is a um, uh, which is a huge milestone, and, and one I'm very very pleased about. Um, so thank you so much uh, to everyone who's who's got involved with the channel. 
uh, and is joining and is joining this evening. Um, cool. I'm going to pretty much consider this done. And again, what I would probably do is take it into Photoshop and just neaten up a couple of these stray things. In fact, let's just do that. Let's go edit in so you can see how quick and easy that is. Um, I will start by duplicating my background. Just having a look in the comments. Hedgehog says, um, X, X film shooter, but new to digital. Um, the post-production stuff um, feels a bit cheaty um, uh, to them still, sigh. Which is a absolutely fair comment. A lot of a lot of people uh, would say that. I mean, I, I try to have my limits of what I consider to be uh, fair game for editing and for me it's sometimes it's about um uh it's about emphasizing what is what is what is naturally there what i don't like doing is doing composites i don't put um mushrooms or flowers um into into a scene which were not there um and i feel that it's easy to draw a line in what is really there and what isn't what we're seeing here is uh is a, is a real natural scene but you know what I'm doing is correcting those colors from what the camera has sort of done with its white balance to bring it back to a real thing. And white balance has always been a thing. Let's also not forget that with film cameras, all of these techniques and things were absolutely there for film production. You know, uh, dodging and burning, that comes from film. You know, you've always been able to put different filters, tobacco filters, polarizers, all of these things do wild things to your images. So, you know, this photography has always been an artistic pursuit and what i do here is is for for me my art rather than it being a scientifically accurate record of what i'm doing you know that is how i feel that art in a photography sense art differs from science i am not trying to create a record to put into a journal i'm trying to create um a lovely image um so that's purely my take on it i also feel that honesty in photography is really important and if you do do things like composites and you put sort of fantastical scenes together or you put an animal like a stag into an image that wasn't really there i feel it's important to say so um and i'm sure it will have escaped no one's noticed that there's a lot of people on uh instagram that do, that create these scenes and are, are not honest about how they were um were created and um uh, i think that is a little bit more more troublesome for me uh the the level i go to with with sort of color correction and things is um uh is uh, is about kind of where i would want to um, want to take it to this is still a real scene with real colors um but again i'm you know I, I enjoy having those conversations with people who who feel differently and actually what i'm about to do in removing some of these objects is probably would probably go against you know some of what i say because look how easily you can just remove that you get the spot correction uh, spot removal tool you paint over a bit and photoshop goes oh okay i get it you don't want that there I'll get rid of that for you. And we just get rid of these distracting elements. And you could argue very easily that that's not honest. And I would say, no, it's not. However, I could just have taken those twigs away and cleaned up the scene before I took the shot. And the result would have been exactly the same, but I'd have done it there. However, for me, my argument in, in this instance is that I don't like cleaning up the scene. I don't like taking things off the mushrooms in case I end up damaging anything. So I like to leave the scene exactly as I found it. And then if I do feel I need to take away a stray twig, a bit of leaf or something, I can do that more safely in Photoshop. So the result would be the same. You clean up your image either physically with a brush and a, in your hands at the scene, or you do it in Photoshop afterwards the result the resulting image would be identical i could have taken this uh twig away i could have removed clumps of moss some people would do for me i would encourage uh you to always leave the scene um as you found it don't mess around with nature um yeah so but i am just getting rid of some of these more distracting these vibrant sticks I like that a little bit of this a little bit of that um yep something like that we zoom out we fit on screen we go before and after and suddenly all of these things that really kind of catch the eye have gone and your eye instead goes towards as i said before the brightest thing in the scene which is this fungus so really 
I think it does make a huge difference. And again, you could have picked these out yourself at the scene. Instead, I'd rather just do it in Photoshop, um, something like that. But um, you know, Hedgehog is absolutely, absolutely right. And particularly coming from from film, um, it is easy to kind of look at a lot of of any digital techniques and think, oh, it's not, it's not like real photography, which isn't what um, uh, what they were saying. And, and their comment is completely legitimate. So don't, um, uh, you know, nobody nobody argue too strongly. Um, and again, it's an art. Everyone has their own ways of. Uh, of doing things but um yeah there's all kinds of stuff you can do with film in the in their processing so um there we go i'm going to leave this this shot there um it's not been a big edit this one's been a little bit more about correction we've taken it from this where the background is very dark and and um we've got a lot of these distractions and with a few color corrections and with the object removal we've achieved this so still a very natural scene but we've just brought brought it a little bit more back to life as it were um and i'm, I'm quite pleased about that um having a quick look in the comments uh, some yeah some some conversation going on um uh around what is fair game in processing and what isn't um i'm not going to um uh I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into uh, the argument too much. I've said my thing, and um, you know nobody is right or wrong. Uh, certainly, I think as long as you're, you know, you're honest about this. I, I never claim that any of my shots are straight out of camera. Um, it, although even then, your camera puts its own processing um, on things anyway. You know, Canon photos look different to Sony photos, look different to Nikon photos. So um, yeah, you know, what what is what is truth there we go did not think we'd be getting philosophical on this but um <laughs> you know there we go um let's take a look at um at this shot because this is one that i thought i would show you just a very quick bit of focus stacking because we have a mushroom which on this shot i focused on the outer rim of the mushroom and on the previous one i focused much more on the stem although even then as you can see it's not fully in focus so I don't always feel that you need to do a pin sharp focus stack as again that comes down to how what I like to do is more of like an artistic interpretation of um, of what I'm seeing rather than necessarily a, um, a like a scientific record where every bit has to be pin sharp. So for me it does not matter necessarily that it's not all perfectly in focus but clearly on here this front rim isn't and so what i wanted to do is just combine these two shots that is easy to do select both images right click edit in open as layers in photoshop we'll give that a moment moments over here we are okay so now we can see that we've got both those layers and just for ease we're going to rename this stem and i'm going to rename this one cap so now I know exactly which one is which. And now I took this on a tripod, but as you can see, as I flip these on and off, the mushroom switches position slightly. Um, now there's two ways you could correct this. You could either just select them both, go to edit and go to auto align layers and see if Photoshop can do it for you. And in this case, it absolutely has. The other way would just be simply to do it manually, turn the opacity down um, on one layer um, and then literally sort of drag it round until it's sort of vaguely in line like that but typically um, Photoshop's own tool undo uh, will do that um, better so that's usually the best way to work okay uh, stem or cap which one did I want more in focus I want this one mostly in focus so what we're going to do is go with stem and I'm going to create a layer mask. Now with a layer mask, anything that is white on that mask will show through. Anything that is black on that mask will not show through. So in this instance, if I press Control and I to invert the mask, it turns it black, and now you can see we can't see any of it. Which means if I get a brush, larger brush size, something around that sort of size, um, a low flow, which just means that you paint it in bit by bit, and if I paint with white as my uh, color, I can just paint in 
white onto that um, uh, onto that layer mask, and that reveals reveals that layer. And as you can see, as I paint in, more of that stem becomes visible. And it's an easier way of doing doing it like that. So now we have just been able to paint in that little bit of focus exactly as we want. In fact, if you go too far, which I have on this bit, you um, let's swap your colors, paint with black, and you can undo it. You know, you can paint with black and get rid of the whole thing. So it's very easy to work with masks rather than literally like the eraser tool and trying to erase the image because then you've got to put it back. So this is just a much easier way of um, uh, easy way of doing things. Uh, so now we've done that, what we can do is just uh, merge the layer. I'm not even going to crop it. I'm just going to press save because we're going to do the rest of our post work back in Lightroom where we are all much more comfortable. So we can crop it here. We can move in, something like this. There we go. Uh, having a look in the comments. Uh, CC photography says honesty is the best policy. Everything is subjective. Yep, I agree. Um, I mean, there's quite a few photographers who I uh, do see like, big names on Instagram, and and their stuff is again. You would argue some. You could easily argue fake. You know, skies have been replaced. You know, drab, dreary skies been replaced with glorious sunsets, or you know, an image of you know a, a lovely beach or something has been uh, replaced with like a, an image of the. Um, uh, the Milky Way above it, you know, some photographers I've seen who've done shots of that in England and like in areas where you, you can never see the Milky Way like that because Britain skies don't allow for it, you know, and, and you know, that shot has not happened. But they're not also being honest in that image when it's posted. They may have done tutorials or something saying, oh, yeah, you know, I, and I'll put this in to get this thing. But in when they post that image, they're not putting it in there that it's a composite. The issue then comes that some times, even if people do do that, they then get reposted by those big accounts, um, those big Instagram accounts, and then they get reposted all over the place, and they don't put it in that it's a composite. And so it doesn't matter, even if the first photographer was honest and said, this is not a uh, a real image, or it's not a real landscape, it's not a, or I, I faked the sky, I've done this, other people can take it and won't bother putting that in because they don't care. Um, so it, it does sometimes get a little bit tricky so you just got to really draw your own lines where you're comfortable doing and this what what you're seeing here and what you may have seen in some of my other videos is exactly is what I'm comfortable uh, doing um, so that's it anyway there we go this needs brightening up it's dark so we've done that the shadows I'm going to bring down because even if you bring them up it gets a little bit HDR too much visible detail in here and this or around here all this earth and moss is not the part of the image that we want to see it's irrelevant so we bring it bring the shadows down so now we're just seeing these little touches of green where the actual dirt and earth isn't really part of our picture so that's fine what about our whites let's boost those a little bit quickly it starts getting very contrasty and very hot so let's just punch it up a tiny bit something like that maybe bring down those highlights as a result we go before and after before and after i think it's looking it's looking pretty nice already and again you know when we talk about focus stack it's not a perfect focus stack i like that we have that focus fall off though that lovely depth of field um very very pleased with how that comes along um jordan says congrats on the 10k man just want to thank you for the tutorials they've helped me a lot with my macro shots uh you're very welcome thank you so much for watching um the only reason i'm here um sitting doing this uh live stream now celebrating 10,000 subscribers is because so many great people have got involved they've gone into the comments they've liked the the videos and it's been great um i almost never get a, a, a negative comment on videos i i am so so grateful for everyone who has taken the time to uh, sort of be part of this and, I, and i'm always incredibly uh honored when people sort of talk about how it's like helped their photography when they've tagged me on uh instagram photos when they're like hey i watched um battery hq's video and then i went out and did this um yeah it's been it's it's, it's been great it's been an amazing amazing ride and i'm and i'm incredibly incredibly grateful for um all of like how supportive um everyone has been it's been amazing um cool we're back into hsl again 
it is my favorite tool in Lightroom. It's certainly where I do most of my, uh, I feel like my heavy lifting in my edits. And the exposure tabs is for correcting and getting your photo looking like at a decent jumping off point. HSL is where I kind of give it a bit more of a look as it were. So these greens, again, because of white balance, which I've not really corrected for all that much, these sort of otherwise vibrant mosses have become a little bit yellowy and off. So let's drag that a little bit up. And as before, just correct for that extra saturation that it's put in by bringing that down. Um, you know, maybe I've got a little far. Let's bring that down about there, off and on. You can just turn off that tool and just check. And as I do, you can see exactly what it's done. It's gone from this very sort of yellowy, sickly pale green. Suddenly it's gone much more vibrant. And this is an amazing place to walk around in Scotland. It was so vibrant, just carpets of, of, of green mosses and grasses and, um, and stuff. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. But the other reason why um, I think it can be quite nice to have more of a sort of vivid emeraldy green in shots like this because all the other tones are yellows and orange and so if you've got a green which is too yellow then suddenly all of your tones in your image are all basically in one color palette and just in those sort of muddy greeny yellow and orangey things so this we're just bringing a little bit more separation and it helps this mushroom stand out from our scene. Let's grab that yellows a little bit, bring them down. And actually, as I do, you can see that a lot of those greens around here, a lot of these mosses in the background, there's a lot of yellow in those. So actually going too far with that is only kind of undoing what we've just done with our greens here. So I'm gonna bring it down just a little touch. Maybe do just a tiny, tiny bit with that orange. You know, just look again how quickly that stem goes pink. I do not want it to look pink. It was not pink. It was just a nice deep orange. So a very, very subtle touch. That minus 11, I think, is all it needs. We turn that off. We turn that on. Look, in particular, to this rim here. Without it, we've got this sort of green... I think it's a reflection of the green tones around here. But it is very greeny. If I just flick that on and off, look at the difference that subtle shift. We've barely touched these sliders, barely touched them, but it makes a huge amount of difference to just the the, the depth of color on this thing. But it's not it's not changed the colors. It hasn't it hasn't turned this into something that it, it wasn't. It doesn't look different to how it really did. It's just brought back in. It's corrected for those white balance errors. It's brought back the real richness of the natural tone it hasn't made it hasn't made a, a yellow mushroom blue it's just made it a deeper color of what was already there and again that kind of in, in terms of like honesty in photography that's kind of what i'm i'm hoping to uh to achieve um two more things i'm going to do with this shot I'm gonna bring in a linear mask up here just to darken it down. This corner is already dark, but we've got quite vibrant greens down here still. And I just want to, again, help the eye come towards that mushroom. So just putting in that, it's like a natural fall off. It is already there without, without, that, um, without that mask. If I uh, just turn that off. It is already darker. We have that natural fall off already. So it's not adding something that isn't there. I'm just trying to slightly emphasize it um, just to help really kind of give that that feel of like depth and form, which I think is good. What isn't there to the same degree that I'm gonna do is similar to what we did in the one of the other images. We've got this nice light coming in for that top right. You can see that this side of the mushroom is brighter to this side. This is where our sun is coming in. So again, I want to give that a bit of emphasis. I'm going to make a big radial filter, really bring it in, huge thing, and then drag it all the way over here. And um, I'm just going to slightly up that exposure, up that warmth. So we've just got that extra sort of warm kiss of sunlight coming in from that side. And maybe just drag that highlight down a little bit because it's affecting this bit of the mushroom a little bit too much what i will try see if um, this will make any difference if we go 
click on these little dots, intersect mask with, which is a weird way of phrasing it, frankly, but this is what Lightroom's done with its new, its new layout. We go to the luminance range. Now, luminance range and just before the update was just hidden down here and it was much easier to find, but it basically allows you to tell Lightroom that you want your mask to only be applied to either the very light areas or the very dark areas. In this case, I don't want it affecting this top of this mushroom quite as much because it is, excuse me, already very bright. So if I drag this down, as I do, you can start to see it come away. However, you also start to see it doing this weird effect and that's because there's a very hard edge. So if I drag this and we feather it, I know which one is it am I dragging? Is that one the, f that's the mask. Yes, this is the thing, they've broken it. They've made it weird, difficult to understand. Okay, you know what? I'm actually noticing that it's not doing what I would want it to anyway. So I think what I've shown you is completely redundant and um, pointless. And all I've done is waste everybody's time. So, um, you know what? My apologies for that, but um, it didn't really work. In theory... Using this tool would have allowed you basically to say, oh, I don't want this appearing in the very bright part of the mushroom and therefore make it even brighter. Actually, the reality is that the background um, area is, is of a similar tone and therefore trying to reduce it is actually just reducing the whole mask, therefore making it pointless having the mask to begin with. So we're just going to call it uh, a day on this image there. Let's have a look at our before. And our after, you can see just how much difference uh, that has made. Or in fact, actually, you know, we look at the uh, one pre-focus stacking. Just this little sliver of the front of the mushroom in focus. The stem, very much not. It's dark. The tones aren't that great. Boom. Lovely tones. It's brighter. We've got sharpness on the stem. We've got sharpness on the front. So now it kind of stands out as uh, an actual mushroom. So I think it's, uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'll have a little pause here. Let me know what you think of what I've been doing so far. I've been going an hour, um, which is good. Uh, Shy Violet says, "Love watching your videos. They're very relaxing and informative." Thank you very much. Um, yeah, relaxing is is a is a big compliment. I like the idea of 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 my videos being like nice, relaxing, and hopefully, I always feel um, like quite positive ones um to watch i always try and be like as as positive as possible because photography is supposed to be fun it's it's a great hobby and it, it's it's always fun it's always exciting to go out and and see what you can get and uh i, I don't want to you know bash other youtubers or anything like that but one of the things that i i see a lot in in uh tutorials and things is like here's what not to do five things to avoid here are the mistakes you're making and I mean, it always kind of jumps out as being a little bit, you're starting off on a negative stance, you know, instead it's about, you know, here's great, you've gone out, you've, you've taken these lovely shots, go you, this is amazing. And then, you know, here are some tips that you could also consider to take it to the, uh, maybe take it to the next level. Just my right or wrong way of, of, of look, looking at things, but it, it's certainly kind of, you know, I, I like to approach, um, photography um from a from a, a real upbeat uh stance and that's the same whether i'm doing uh like macro and, and nature stuff like this purely for personal reasons um or whether i do um uh whether i'm doing uh, prof uh photography for my professional uh work those of you actually who are completely new to my channel may not even be aware i am a professional photographer um most of my professional work is around uh products it's around um, uh, like editorial uh, shoots for like photo essays and things, um, and it's also for like automotive cars, that kind of thing. Um, so typically, when I'm doing macro and, and wildlife and, and and landscapes, that's usually just for me. Um, so there we go. Uh, okay, let's move on to another one. Um, uh, Jason uh, Petrak, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, uh, asks, can you use extension tubes with a 50mm for doing focus stacking? 
I don't have a macro. Um, yeah, you can. You can use, uh, you know, you can use extension tubes with 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 any any lens. Um, I don't have one immediately to hand. Oh, it's it's slightly out of range. Um, but a extension tube just moves your lens slightly away from your camera body, and in so doing, it allows you to focus much closer. So you can put that on basically any lens and turn it into a macro lens. I've put a extension tube on a like a Canon's 24 to 105 mil zoom lens and I've made that into a macro lens. And then once you've got that close focusing, you can just focus stack in exactly the same way you would any other lens. Take a shot at one focus point, focus to the next, take your shot, focus, take your shot, focus. And then you combine those images in post. So you can do that you can focus stack with any lens you want, with or without extension tubes. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you know, extension tubes are a very, very cheap way of, of kind of getting macro results um, if you don't want to go and spend a lot of money on a macro lens because they're not cheap. Some of these I was going to have a, a look at and maybe do some focus stacking because this these ones look kind of cool. But as you can see, I focused up close on this uh, mushroom here with its sort of, I don't know, I, I assume these are like, insect eggs on the outside maybe i might be wrong um but obviously as i focus stacked it's uh, it's moved out a lot more so i might come back to those if you're interested um and i've actually i've saved a lot of these ladybird uh shots because i kind of wanted to show um slightly the importance of spending some time getting your shots you know sometimes just taking one snap and moving on isn't necessarily going to get you the best shot because for example in this uh scenario you know it's a nice enough shot of a, of a ladybird the the front of it is nice and sharp it's on the leaf with some nice fall off from using um uh, f4.5 as an aperture but i stayed with it as it was walking around siri, could you say that again sorry i couldn't hear what well thank you very much siri that wasn't helpful um I stayed with it and I snapped away as this sort of ladybird was just naturally moving around the scene. And as I did, it sort of got closer and closer and then, uh, you know, sort of walked around this little bit of leaf. And then it went and it climbed right on it. And um, and I got, uh, you know, I got this shot, which I'm really, really pleased with. Um, you know, great. It's right in the middle of that flower, perfectly centered in this lovely uh, lovely vibrant blue you know the red against it with this nice green background um, it's just this lovely natural scene I haven't placed it there I haven't picked it up and, and tried to get it to to go there as you can see I've literally I followed its journey along I mean I actually took these are just a sample I took about 200 <laughs> as I tend to do with these things um, I took a whole bunch and it was walking around and then eventually it did it climbed on and it turned around um, and I got a shot it's it's I haven't used this before because if you look it's not very sharp. I was shooting this at 160th of a second, handheld. As a result, it's a little bit blurry. But if you look at it like this, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. If I was going to do some edits, I'd brighten it up. I'd maybe move down. Maybe I'd look in my um, Visco presets and I'd just go, okay, apply that one. Maybe bring it back down a little bit. Maybe up those shadows ever so slightly, up those whites. And then maybe let's do a crop, four by five, bring it in just a little bit. It's a little bit narrow. Boom, done. Call it a day. Move on. There we go. Here we go. A damselfly. Lovely long boy um, standing against the background. Um, at least I think it's a male. The males tend to be the bigger ones. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really know enough about damselflies, to be honest, to be able to determine that, but I thought I was right I took a whole I took a whole bunch again this was a little scene uh, actually shot in my mum's garden um where uh, I took loads and loads and loads um I haven't tried to focus stack this because I'm side on to it and therefore pretty much everything is in the same plane of focus and so you don't really need it if you look really close up you can see that this outer bit of its eye because its eyes if that's its body its eyes come out like this so you know the, that this bit of eye is closer to me than the rest i think on this one maybe the eye is a little bit sharper and yeah the body is a little bit softer but i just don't think it makes that much difference i prefer this one so why don't we have a little um 
uh, a little a little look at this because I do like it. I've intentionally used um, uh, that depth. It, I've kind of got around to get on its level. I'm shooting across rather than shooting down on it. And as a result, we've got this lovely depth of field with just these plants and grasses in the background falling to this lovely sort of blurred nothingness. And so this damselfly really, really stands out um, against its background. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with how it is. And even then, you know, that's an F8. So it's still nice and sharp, but we've still got that depth because, you know, camera was here. Maybe the dam damselfly was here a foot away. But then these grasses were probably about 10 feet away in the background. So even F8, we're still getting great depth of field because of that focus distance. Have a little sip of drink, running low, which is a shame. Um, Shavala says, bugs are both beautiful and terrifying. They are both. I, um, I have a weird thing in that I am absolutely terrified of spiders in that I hate them being on me or near me or in my house uh, i will never kill them i will always um rem have them removed to the outside i was going to say remove them i rarely do it myself um because i am really bad with them but i if i see one when i'm out and about like one of those sort of big chunky friends in a big web in autumn i will get right up to it and give it a uh, try and get some nice photos because for some reason it's different when i'm holding a camera uh, okay, let's have a look. I'm just going to crop in ever so slightly on the top so that it's much more kind of centered straight across uh, the middle of the frame. Uh, I'm going to bring those highlights down a little bit, which should, I think, just be affecting this uh, this flower because it was a little blown out in our highlights there. It doesn't need a lot. And again, we pulse it up and down until I find a nice midpoint somewhere around there. Minus 17 is about all we need. Um, okay, our white balance, I think, is a little bit green. It is it is sort of a little greeny on um, on the damselfly itself. So let's just up that uh, somewhere around here. Already looking much better. Uh, what about our shadows? Let's lift our shadows. You know what? Let's not lift our shadows. What I'm going to do is I'll try and use those same tools that we looked before. So let's get our um, radial filter. We are going to uh, put a nice circle over him here, move it around, something like this. And this time we are going to up our shadows, up our whites a little bit and up that clarity, just give a little punch. But as you can see, if we just turn that off and on, oops, you can see the whole ring all the way around. So this time, I'm going to see if I can get that uh, that tool to work. Intersect mask with uh, luminance range. And uh, where has our luminance range gone? Where has it gone? Luminance range. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. So we're back on that mask. And now, as you can see, if we drag this up, it gets rid of it from the dark areas. If we drag it down from the top, it gets rid of it from the bright areas. And we want to get rid of it from the bright areas. The background is very, very bright. The actual insect itself is much darker. So we drag it from the top and it disappears, 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 gone. There we go. So now if we look at our overlay, that red is only applied now to the fly, to the damsel fly. It's not on our background, so we can do whatever we want to this mask now we can bring up and down it isn't affecting our background green at all which is perfect it's exactly what we want so that is why that tool is so powerful you don't need to go in zoom in and paint in that detail very very carefully you can just be as rough as you want put a big splotch over it i could make that mask even bigger fill the whole thing but because i've used that um luminance uh, range it's only going to apply it to the dark parts of the fly it's very 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 handy steam back out i can turn that off um, I'm, i may may even come back and use it a little bit more um, but at this point i'm pretty happy and that's meant that because we've lightened up the body we can sort of bring our shadows down and i like that because it's adding a little bit more contrast on this flower itself um, and i really like having um, having that extra little sort of depth to those uh, to those nice flower petals um okay and again, 
we come to the HSL tools. It is my favorite, I told you it was. Um, again, I'm gonna up that green so we get a nice bit of separation between sort of the yellowy greens in the background, some of the yellows in the, uh, in the flowers and some of the yellows on the insect itself. We want to make it stand out. We want to make it really the hero of this scene. Again, we've gone um, we've gone more emeraldy with the green. As a result, it's gone a little bit too saturated. So we drag it down a little bit. Maybe bring down that luminance ever so slightly. The hues. What about the yellows? We can move those up and down. You know what? With the yellows, I am going to bring it down. Maybe I'm going to adjust those greens. So maybe we could go a little bit down with both. It gives it a bit more of a summer vibe. And I think I took this in the summer. When did I take this? It's not relevant, but sometimes it's nice to know. Where will I see that? Where is information gone? I don't know. I don't know where I'd find that. I mean, it's not really relevant, is it, I suppose? Uh, probably be in here, metadata. Uh, fifth of the sixth or is that sixth of the fifth june fifth of june there we go so yeah sort of summary so it's kind of nice actually having that so maybe i'll maybe we will you know we've gone very autumn and very vibrant greens with them um, some of the other ones let's go the other way let's go some nice sort of summer evening vibes going on here i like that up those yellows a little bit allow them to be a bit more desaturated here because it's just helping that red pop out even more um, let's zoom in a little bit as we adjust the red so we can see what's going on because you know you take it one way it very e immediately goes orange take it the other it goes pink so I just think somewhere around minus six a tiny amount it's just that extra again that sort of depth of red taking it from that orangey red into much more of a deeper scarlet uh, I really like that also going to increase the luminance a little bit and in so doing slightly increase the saturation to balance it out because that vibrant red is just going to help our friend here stand out even more from the background if we just turn this off and on off and on again this is we've gone with a little bit more of a like a look with the toning here but it's um uh it really has made a, um, I think I think it's made a nice difference. Um, it's got a, a generally nice warm vibes. What do you think? Let me know. Because um, I don't think there's anything else I would do to this. I don't think it needs it. I think it really kind of stands on its own. Um, you know, you could maybe, it's not pin sharp on here, to be fair. Maybe I could go in with, the, with, a, with a brush, create a new mask, create a brush and um, I could increase the texture a little bit and I could increase the sharpness a little bit and just try and paint in essentially a little bit of sort of sharpness and, and clarity on like its wings and its body which might just help make it look a little bit sharper but at a certain point if you haven't got a sharp image to begin with if you've got motion blur just increasing sharpness and texture and clarity is not going to rescue your broken shot. But if I just pulse that up and down, that texture, you can see that it, it, it does make a difference. And because I've only applied it with a subtle brush, even at plus 100, it's not actually that strong because I've only applied about, you know, a small amount of that, um, the brush, because I've got quite a low flow so i've basically only applied 20 percent of that 100 so if that makes sense cc photographer says you need a pet jumping spider they are so cool um i don't need that i think that might be one of the last things i need um is something that i'm already afraid of that might at its own whim jump that seems like uh, yeah a, a very good way for me to um, crumble into a ball of nerves and uh, just cry. So um, yeah, let's let's not go with the jumping spider. Uh, Shy Violet says anything for the shots probably about my yeah I will get photos of spiders if it's for a good photo yeah absolutely anything for the shot, one hundred percent. Oh you know what this is in, this is this one might be an interesting one because this I really like uh, this shot we've got quite a relatively sharp I, I didn't i didn't spend a long time getting the shot it was definitely a snap 
of this little uh, this little critter here. But framing wise, I intentionally sort of put it down in his bottom third. I wanted to use this negative space because I felt this looked almost like a ladder that it was going to be climbing, and I, and I really kind of liked the suggestion that with that negative space, it's got further to climb up. Maybe I'm seeing I'm, I'm reading a little bit too much into it, but. I thought this might be interesting because this is a shot that I took on my iPhone. This was just on my iPhone. One of the iPhones, I think the 9, no, the 11. iPhone 11 Pro, maybe, profile corrections. Yeah, iPhone 11 Pro. There we go, back camera. Um, and I think I had the um, one of the clip-on little macro lenses. I think the ones I had at the time were from a company called Moment. And uh, it's literally just a clip-on lens that you put onto your phone case and it allows you to focus very, very close up. The new iPhone actually has a built-in uh, macro function, which um, would work, but you have to get very, very close to your 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 bug. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to um, uh, think about composition. It's more just about getting very, very close up. Whereas with this, I was able to actually think a little bit more about how I was positioning the uh, the insect kind of within uh, the frame, but um, uh, yeah, you know, we go. This is an iPhone shot, so you do not need a big, expensive DSLR. You do not necessarily need the best lenses if you spend your time thinking about your shot, um, and hopefully, with a little bit of editing, love, we can turn this into something a little bit interesting. Let's start off and let's have a look at um, what it looks like with uh, A6 RAW on this obviously it's gone quite bright so i'm going to bring that down um in fact it's gone very bright but that's okay because we can play around with this a little bit again with our green colors these are very very yellow so let's take that green uh make it a little deeper and we're going to bring that luminance right down maybe undo some of that saturation a little bit and as we've done suddenly we've got you know, we know what color ferns are in the middle of summer. They are vibrant. They are green. They are vivid. They are lovely. So what this has done is brought it back to where it was because this, uh, the original, oh, I see, before, I have done an edit on this previously and it's going to show that. So there you go. There was my first edit and that's basically what I'm trying to achieve here. Although it's really dark and contrasty. I don't know why that is. Anyway, um, you know, it's, it's great because we've got this vivid orange of the insect itself and now by giving some separation, um, we've, so we have given it some separation by making the greens of the background much more green and vivid. And therefore, it's moved those colors apart, essentially, and allows the bug to really stand out. So let's keep on going. Do that. What about these yellows? Yes, same again. We can up those yellows a little bit make them that nice green bring that down there we go look at this look how much more it stands out if we turn that off everything's sort of this weird yellow everything's this this sort of off sickly tone because again you know i was taking it with an iphone but i think i took it in raw because yeah this is a dng file um, so even on on my phone and i shoot a lot on my phone i always shoot in raw if it's a shot that i know that i want to spend some time um uh um, if I want to spend some time editing and try and get a nice photo. So just already look at the difference. Look how much this little guy absolutely pops off the screen. As a result, with our luminance, let's drag the orange because he is all orange. He or she, or they, is all orange. Um, so let's pump that up to plus 22. Hue. We can mess around with a little bit. Again, make it slightly rich orange because I've just lightened it up so it's lost a little bit of saturation. But I'm not going to touch with saturation, although it is a minus five. That is all I want to do. Look at the difference. Isn't that huge? And that isn't, um, you know, going back to what we, what we were talking about earlier in terms of, um, you know, whether a shot is sort of real, whether it's, whether it's fake. This was fake already because the camera has sort of made these colors these 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 green plants it's made it very yellow it's made it very um very orange when did i when did i take this again let's have a look maybe it says 18th of july yeah so this this was green this was vibrant it was vivid and instead it's it's it hasn't done that it's captured it in a different in a different way 
And so actually going to our um, going into this and adjusting these colors, what we've done is brought it back to where it should be. So this is more color correction than it is anything else. And I do think it's, um, oh, that was our other one. You know, I like it. I like how this is looking. There's more that you could do. You could maybe bring in, I think, you know, if we look at our previous one, I've evidently brought in a, um, a vignette to again, draw the eye uh, to um, the bug itself. But this definitely is not how I would have edited it because there's no way I'd have allowed this to be that dark and contrasty. So I think it's, um, I'd edited this in a different program and then imported it into Lightroom. I think it's reading it wrong. Um, I like this. I think this is good. I'm not going to touch this anymore. You know, sometimes just getting it to a natural point and then calling it a day is all, is all you really need. Um, as I'm doing any of these, let me know what you what you think of them. Let me know how what you might look for. Whether you like um, the shot while I finish my GNT. I should have made two, really, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, and of course, as we're as we're going, pop your put your thoughts, put your comments in the box. Um, I want to try and do some live streams a little bit more regularly because I do. I love just doing these sort of chill edits it may not be macro maybe it'll be landscapes maybe we'll do some product um stuff or something but it's just nice to have an opportunity to invite people to come and actually kind of join in that process to ask questions that i'm doing because otherwise it's entirely one way i put out a video maybe you'll leave a comment maybe i'll be i'll find time to get back but instead you know if you ask a comment about oh what are you doing with this tool i can actually answer and i can show you and i really like doing that um, I also like to be able to directly talk with people and, and certainly thank again, thank you all for um for, for, for being part of this. Um so um yeah, you know, it's been it's been great. It's been it's been amazing doing this. Uh so let me know if you are interested. I suppose the people who are in the comments now are of course gonna say, yes, I like uh, I like a live stream. Um maybe if you're watching this as an on demand one and you would like to have seen it live, uh, let me know. I picked seven o'clock because it seemed like a good balance of when people in the US might be online and people in the UK might be online. Um, but, you know, I can always do that at a different time. Although not too late because it is, uh, what is it, almost half eight p.m. It's almost way past my bedtime. Uh, okay, let's have a look at another one. Let's do a, let's do, a, this is an older one. This is one from uh, one of my, my first main uh, macro videos. And I may have already done an edit sequence of this. I can't remember. But this is another one that I just don't think needs loads of work. It's definitely a little dark, so we're going to bring it up. Look at all the detail we've captured. It's not pin sharp on um, on the butterfly, but it is certainly sharp enough. So I'm really, really pleased with how that's come out. Uh, we're going to adjust that white balance a little bit. Cool it off. Increase that... Um, that tint so I think we're in a good place if we already look before and after before and after we're getting to a good place what we have done is lost a little bit of the greens in these stems and we've lost a little bit of green in this eye look at that before it was very green very vibrant we've lost that a little bit so that's okay we can come back to that yeah okay that's fine we could do that um, with these shadows if we pulse that up and down, if you go right to the top to bring back this background detail, you suddenly lose the separation again between the butterfly itself and its background. So I actually don't want to do anything with the shadows at all. I like that we've got this really dark background because it just makes, it just increases that contrast between bright white butterfly and dark background. So that's great. Um, did I do a crop already? I don't think I did. Let's do that. Let's bring it in this side because this is a sort of wasted space. We don't really need it. So I'm going to bring it in here, slightly bring it in this way too. So we've basically got the eye of our butterfly in this top left third. Um, but we've still got some nice negative space around here. I think this is looking pretty good. Um, let's go down to our HSL tab. Let's get the hues. Let's look at what these greens are doing. Let's definitely increase those greens a little bit, try and bring some of that color back. 
um, maybe reduce that luminance uh, slightly a little bit. So now, again, those stems are visible. Before, they're yellow. They are definitely not yellow. They were green. The petals are yellow. So we've brought that back. It's looking more natural already. Um, those yellows themselves, we shouldn't really touch because they are yellow. I'm just going to bring it minus four, barely touching. But I just think it's making... Yeah, it's making no difference really, is it? Um, but I am going to touch, I'm going to bring the luminance down because they are a little overpowering. I'm also going to bring the saturation down because they're so vibrant that it just helps just take the edge off a little bit. So if we now turn off our HSL, you can see just how how uh, how light and vibrant they are. Now, still there, but it's a little bit more subtle. Okay, if that makes sense. And again, with a lot of this, um, as I said at the, at the, at the top of the uh, stream, it's down to taste. This is what I like to do. There is no right way. There is no wrong way. There is no you should do this. There is no you should not do that. It is exactly down to what you think looks best for your own photo. If you've gone and taken it, it's up to you to make those decisions. And it's fun, it's creative, and you should enjoy the process. You know, I love editing. I know a lot of photographers don't. For me, I like nothing more than getting either, you know, maybe a GT and t or a big mug of tea, sitting down and going through my photos, playing with the edits, and seeing what I can what I can get from these shots. You know, I think it's it's all part of the process, and why not enjoy it? So on this, I am going to increase the texture and up a little bit of clarity. And I'm just going to paint this in. In fact, let's do flow maximum just so that it we can see a little easier what it's doing. As I'm sort of painting this in, you can just see that we've suddenly got a lot more detail in, well, the fur, I suppose. It is fur, isn't it? If we just turn this uh, effect off and on. Oops. Maybe you can't see this all that well in the um, stream because of YouTube's compression, but certainly to my eye, we're really getting a lot more um, uh, detail there. So I'm going to continue with this brush and just paint it in a little bit more. Let's turn off. Um... Okay, there we go. Not on everywhere, but just on the bits of the uh, wing where we've really got um, some of that nice sort of texture from all the different... Uh, I suppose scales that they have in their wing, but I don't want to go too far on these tiny little hairs around there. Maybe a little bit on those knees. Knees? Do butterflies have knees? I mean, that's what I would call a knee. It's the joint. So, uh, Alistair says in the comments, have you tried Topaz Labs Sharpen AI or similar to rescue photos from Motion Blur? Um, I haven't. I've seen some examples that they've put out that have evidently worked and i've also seen examples from other people where they've put photos in and it definitely hasn't worked um that would be an occasion where i would just want to if i if i haven't got the shot then i try and get the shot again next time i don't want to have to use things to to like rescue a shot um, unless it was maybe i don't know uh, like a wedding i used to photograph weddings i mean strictly speaking i've still do i just try not to um uh you know if, if you were getting the one uh moment where the bride throws her bouquet or something and you, you only got one photo and it was blurry maybe in that instance there's no way you can go and do a reshoot and uh, and but you need that photo then then maybe it could be a useful tool but for the most part, I just go through my photos and I try and take enough photos that I have got the right one. I also check in camera, have I got the photo? Before I leave a photo shoot, I'm looking, I'm making sure that I've got what I wanted. If that's macro and I'm looking at, um, you know, and I'm getting and I'm getting the shot, I'm making sure that I'm crafting that in camera and that I, I, I zoom in on the details, make sure that I've got what I want before um, before I leave. No, that is not always the case. As I sort of showed with that um, ladybird, it, its um, its head wasn't quite pin sharp, and, and arguably this one that we're looking at here is also not quite pin sharp, but it's it's close enough. And um, 
yeah, you know, it, it may well work really, really well. And and um, Alistair, if you've used it and um, you found it good, yeah, yeah, let, let, let us know because it could be it could be a really useful tool. And um, what I'm doing now is another brush, and this one is going to be just for this eye, like this. In fact, let's get rid of that exposure. We don't need it brighter. Um, but it was green before, wasn't it? We saw it was green. So I'm going to try and bring that back. So I'm going to reduce the temperature and reduce that tint. And in so doing, we've already given it more of a green. I've upped that saturation. I don't want to go too far. Um, <laughs> Hedgehog says, weddings, try not to. Love the honesty. Yeah, I mean, I, I have done quite a few weddings. And actually, every single one I've loved doing. It's amazing being part of someone's day. And um, I have my, my portfolio includes a load of weddings um, and I basically work on the basis that if someone sees my work and specifically says, I want your photos for my wedding, then, um, you know, I will have that conversation and, and um, I, I, would, I would obviously be honored to, to take that work. But what I don't do is advertise as a wedding photographer. I'm not out there trying to get work as a wedding photographer it's not it's never been what I do I have my job and you know anything photography uh wise would just be um you know like this or weddings would be an extra um you know my, my job as a photographer pays me enough that I don't need to go hunting down um uh, additional work not that it would ever be a bad thing to have some uh, extra pocket money um you know certainly I would never say no um, to it, but it's, um, there's a lot of stress. If you've ever done weddings, then you'll understand that there's a lot of anxiety involved in, are you definitely going to get the right shot? Are you definitely going to get the number? You know, if you like a shot, is the bride and the groom, are they going to like the shot? And um, sometimes that is, that's tricky to navigate. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not for me. Um, necessarily and in fact hedgehog says my most stressed friend is a wedding photographer yep i can believe that entirely um oh, what have i just done nope undo that i don't know redo cloudy adjustment i'm sorry uh no i'm trying to use a new mask create new mask brush and this one which reducing those shadows um reducing that flow again and i'm going to try and just paint in a little bit just to try and emphasize those shadows on its wing um because they've got some really nice sort of ways that it it you know we've got those textures i suppose the way it almost looks like it's rippling i just want to see if i can kind of emphasize that with a little bit of shadow detail it's making absolutely no difference whatsoever there we go i mean maybe a little bit of dehaze yeah that's doing a little bit more if i pump that up and down you can kind of see what that's doing don't want to do don't want to do a lot with it so there's our before there's our after. You know what? I don't think that was our before. I don't think this is. I think I think this was my first processed file. I think we're having the same thing with this one when I went before and after because I've edited this in something else, Lightroom, and then I have re-imported it. I've exported it. What I thought was the negative into this anyway fine you can see what i did before and i felt it was too dark i've brightened it so that's kind of what we've gone i've gone a slightly different way a more airy more sunnery shot and that's fine sometimes that's a great thing to do as well is go back and re-edit your old photos you've learned new techniques and maybe there's new tools you can play with so go back you know if you've still got those raw files you can go back in have another play and maybe you'll find that a photo that didn't really excite you all that much three years ago when you took it suddenly now with 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 new skills that you've developed and new ideas you can actually turn it into something something really really special um cool i mean i could keep going um let me know how you're all getting on what time are we on half a i'll, I'll do i'll do one more and i'll try and answer some more um uh some more questions if you've got any then do please um uh throw your comments in the chat um let's do let's do this one because this is one of like the 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 main images that i had in one of my my recent videos uh, when i was doing macro in the forest excuse me and i think it's a it's a real standout image but i use a few uh techniques on purpose in order to um 
of course it was on purpose I don't really do any of this stuff accidentally I accidentally took this photo and then I accidentally edited it um I fell onto the sliders and they just went into position um yeah but I, I specifically tried to like, make this stand out and again I'm going to be using the same tools that you've seen these are the tools that I use all the time um and I think they're important um what I'm starting off with this though is a different crop and I'm going to go with this one with a 69 and the reason being once this pops into uh, uh, interview like that we can see that up here at the top of frame now cropping is important even after you've taken your image always get your image as close uh, you know your framing as good as you can in camera but here you can see we've got a lot of sort of empty black space we just like these little background strands of grasses and um, it's not necessarily important to keep that in the shot. So by just cropping that out, we're not losing any of the actual subject. Our subject here is this scene in this wide scape. We've got the mushroom itself. We've got these lovely vibrant mosses down here. And we've got these tall sort of spiky mosses. That is the real focus of this image. Um, you know, this negative space up here is just a bit useless and so whenever whenever possible i'll try and really study an image and think about how i can be getting rid of useless space maybe that's um you know a landscape where I don't know, you're standing near a cliff and you just got lots of ground before it then gets to a nice bit of cliff you know you can you can do a lot to like really refine um, a composition and i find that when you do that's like a really really good way of taking a snap and making it look like a more polished image so just in doing that, I think we've already we've gone a long way to making this uh, a better shot. Um, as we've done with some of the other ones, because of the white balance, we've got quite yellowy, uh, yellowy greens going on. So again, I'm going straight into my HSL. It's where most of my work is done. I'm going to grab that green. We're going to move it up slightly. That's our saturation. I mean, I'll use that at some point as well. Our hue move it up slightly ooh, straight away very vibrant but again as with that sort of that bug one before that we did with the iphone it's given so much more separation between the orange of the mushroom and the uh and the the mosses around it turn that off it's all it's all within the yellow color palette at the moment and with that suddenly it stands out we've now got very defined greens and then we've got a very defined orange in front of it. That, I think, makes a huge difference. It has gone a bit too far. So again, we're going to knock it down in the saturation just a little bit. Just to counter the additional saturation it's put into the scene. In the hues, let's grab that uh, yellow. Move it down a little bit into the orange. Again, we don't want to go too far. But I think we can stand to go a little bit further than before. Maybe minus 30-ish. Taking it from that sort of sickly greeny yellow into more of an orange tone for exactly the same reason it creates that separation so just using those those two sliders made a huge difference to this image i already think this is a nice straight out of camera snap this already looks like a more polished more professional more considered image it's like you've really thought about how you um how you want those tones to really come out so let me know what you um, think of this so far. Um, I'm going to use a um, uh, another filter just to help darken down this because look how bright um, these mosses are down here. Very, very, very bright in tone. And um, uh, I think we can just tone that down a little bit. Bring this up, something like this. Just bring that exposure. It's emphasizing that shadow. And if you look already, at the bottom of the mushroom is shadow. And at the bottom of all these ones, it's shadow. So it's just bringing it back in. And it's sort of helping sculpt that light a little bit more. I think that looks really, really nice already. I just think it has made a huge difference. What do you think? That one tool really has made a big difference to just how that looks. Because that was so bright. And now it actually blends in. This green here is now of a similar brightness and tone to the greens here, only maybe an inch behind. You know, there's hardly any difference 
uh, in distance um, here, but now they actually match. Whereas before, this was overpoweringly bright against this, um, which is purely down to the way that my, my flash uh, came in. So we've corrected for where that flash has gone. You know, I don't really want to do much more to this. <laughs> but I inevitably will. What about if we put a little bit of color grading in our shadows, put a little bit of sort of cooler blue tones in there. We turn it off, we turn it on. I want to like what that's done. That looks really nice. And we could maybe put some warmth back in those highlights to kind of counter that a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to need it, but we can have a little play. Just a little bit. Once you've once you put your saturation in like this, you can then drag and change that hue. So you could put any color you want. I mean, you know, greens and, and stuff in the highlights doesn't, doesn't look good at all. But yeah, these oranges look great. So we turn this tool off and on, off and on. Yeah, I think that makes a nice makes a nice difference overall. Um, Alison says it would make a fab image for a children's fairy story book. Thank you. I think it probably would too. You could imagine. Uh, I don't know, maybe like a little, um, some sort of tiny pixie sitting underneath it or, or climbing up it. Maybe they've, maybe they've thrown a grappling hook onto the top and they're, they're climbing their way up that stem or something. Maybe there's a good Photoshop to do. Photoshop me into it and I'll claim that it's real. Let's see who'd believe that. Instagram. Instagram would believe it. Um, but I mean, this is a thing, you know, with, with the different tools um, that you can use in, in Lightroom. If you look at the difference in our straight out of camera raw file and um, and you, you look at the before and after, I haven't touched any of our exposure, our highlights, our shadows, whites, blacks. I haven't touched clarity. I haven't touched our vibrance and saturation. Almost everything that's been done to this image has been done in the HSL tab. And just with that one little thing there. Um, so, you know, that's uh, that's that's all we've done. Um, Hedgehog says in the comments, the nearest seed head to the shroom is too bright. That would be this one. Yeah, I agree. I think that probably is. Yeah, it distracts the eye. You know, you don't know where to look. Do you look at this? But no, this is too bright. So, you know, why don't we give that a little, um, we'll give that a little look. Um, let's put a, a radial gradient over the top. Uh, we can just bring down exposure bring down that highlights you know you can only go so far before it just looks a little bit too dark because obviously it is there obviously has caught the light um so you know something like that you could maybe try and get away with um you know i think that kind of looks good i mean to me i don't mind it because i again it's it's it's, it's almost like part of the subject itself it's this it's this thing that's standing out against these greens so you know for me I, I, don't, I don't mind that I think in my other edit I don't think I touched it at all maybe just taking the edge off those highlights a little bit um, would work but um, something like that uh, if it really bothered me I think I'd probably just photoshop it out in the same way as hypothetically on location you could have just taken it out of the scene um, I would not pick it out of the scene for the same reasons I said before. Um, I'd rather Photoshop it than just pick plants. Um, so yeah, you know, I think this is, I think this is, this is okay. Um, there's not, I don't think there's much more I'd want to do. Let me know what else, you know, what you think to this scene. This is one I, I when I, when I did it, I was really, really pleased with. I took this using, using flash. Um, uh, I was out on location off to camera left, um, way over this side. Um, I had my my light, and so that's casting this beam of light in, lighting the mushroom, that's giving that separation from its much darker background. So yeah, you know, let me know what you let me know what you think. Um, I think that it should probably be um, everything we've done because I've gone on for a, a long time now. It's quarter to nine. I've been going for an hour and forty-five minutes. So let's have a little look at some of the shots that we've we've done. I've not done everything in this uh, in this collection, but we've done this where we've we've adjusted some of these colors, removed some of those distracting objects to really make sure that this coral fungus is our focus. We took this shot from being what I think is a um, 
uh, a very uh, dark and dreary shot to being something a little bit more vibrant and stand out. And again, this has just been done in with some Lightroom adjustments. We've not taken this over into Photoshop. Um, then we've done our little focus stacking and our color adjustments on this. Such powerful tools, very easy to do. Each one of these has taken me, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to do because I've been talking through every single thing. But the reality is if you're just playing around these sliders, you could do each one in two minutes. You know, you can just quickly go through, give it a little boost and sort of see, see what you can get from it, you know. But as I say, it's about playing around. It's about experimenting with those sliders. You drag it, you drag it one way, you drag it the other way. You see what it does and from there, you adjust to your own tastes. So um, let's call the editing uh, a day there. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone again for for being part of the channel. Um, the fact that I got to 10,000 subscribers, as I've repeated several times now, is phenomenal. I am so, so happy. I am so, so grateful for everyone who's been involved. Um, I never thought when I started this that I would get anywhere close to this, and it's been it's been a joy. I love um, I love doing um, I love doing the videos. Um, I love going out on location. I love doing the shooting, um, and I'm always so thrilled to read everyone's comments on the videos about um, you know what they've learned from it, what they've taken away, how they enjoyed seeing the shots. Uh, so yeah, you know, thank you so much to um, uh, to everyone who's uh, been involved with the channel. And um, if you have enjoyed the, the live streams, um, let me know. Uh, I am tempted to make them a little bit more of a regular thing. Probably won't do weekly, but I'm thinking maybe maybe every two weeks. Let me know what you think about that. Um, and of course, do let me know if there is anything in particular you would like to see me do um, next time. Um, my channel uh, recently has become much more of a macro dedicated channel. It's what everyone seems to really be uh, sort of gravitating towards who, who's been watching my videos, um, seem to like them. I don't mind becoming a very macro focused channel because I love doing macro photos. I really do. But that was never the intention. Um, so, you know, if you if you'd rather, if you want to see me uh, do a little bit more landscapes, you want to see me do a little bit of other stuff. I mean, hell, if you want to see me do my product photography, you know, my my actual job, um, then, uh, you know, I can I can show you that too, but uh, I would say that typically when I've done those videos, nobody has watched them, so um, maybe I won't uh, do some of those. But um, I will wrap it up here. Um, again, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you have enjoyed this uh, stream, give it a like. Um, head over into the comments. You can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram with at Battery HQ. So um, if you wanna if you wanna um, share any of the photos you've taken. Um, with me, then that is where you can find me. Uh, but that's it. Thank you so much for joining. Have a lovely rest of your days wherever you are, and I will see you next time.